So, the next stage, I'm just going to line, by turning the tuning peg, I'm going to make sure the hole is facing kind of right forward. And then I'm going to put the string in the hole and pull it all of the way through. Now, it's really important at this stage that you don't just start winding because what you need, you need the winds to lock the string onto the peg. So, what we're going to do now, we've kind of measured here. Now, we're get, I've, you learn this a bit by experience. I'm, I'm reckoning we need to leave about this much at the end, yeah, it loose in order to wind around the string. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the slack and pull the string back so it's at that point. Now, holding the string at around this point, I'm going to start turning the peg, making sure that the excess string is ending up on the inside of the peg. So if I just flip the guitar over for a sec like that, so you can see that the guitar, that the string is coming out of this side, not the other, not the far side. The, the, the string is over here that's going to the bridge. Now as I start turning, you can see, now Jed you might want to go really close on this if you, if you can. Are you quite close now? Okay, so you can see here's the slack of the string that's not going anywhere. And here's the string that I've got, I'm holding it now in a little I'm kind of using my hand to try and keep it a little bit tense, just so it's keeping kind of keeping the tension on the string. And as I wind, I want that this part, the, the slack bit, to go underneath the rest of the string. It's quite important that it goes underneath the rest of the string. You'll see why in just a second. So now, as soon as it's gone under, I'm now pressing down with my finger now, and every subsequent wind, it's going to go over the top. Now, I'll keep doing it by hand, but actually no, I'm not going to do it by hand. This is the purpose of string winder now. If I just whack string winder on, it's a lot easier. Now, what's happening now is that I'm making sure that the slack here is now going over the top of the guitar, the rest of the string that's going to the bridge. Now, as I, when I spin it around the next time, I'll get Jed to do another close-up there, and you'll see that it's locked. Okay, so... Jed, if you want to go for a little extreme, I'm not sure how close you can get on this to see the strings, but you'll see the top winding is going over the slack of the string, and the second winding is going under the slack of the string. And the reason that this is so useful is that the tighter we make the string, the more those two outside coils are going to press on that string and lock it into place. So that's, that's kind of the deal with that. So, we're just going to keep winding now until the string's fairly loose, making sure that every subsequent wind goes under. It's really important as well. Make sure that the string continues to go under now. So just uh, take your time. There's no hurry with the, with the string change unless it's your job. Now at this point, just as I've got a note now, at this point my, my right hand has wandered over and just made sure that the pin is pressed in correctly. You don't want to let the pin start flying out. Now as soon as you've got a kind of there's a pitch there now. So now I'm going to snip the string quite close to the end. I'm going to leave about probably one centimetre is about how much I, I try and leave. We snip the end off and again this even if, even if there's only that much I try and put it in a little coil if I can and that will go in the bin as well. Not that I have a cat at the moment but uh, I don't want any of the foxes eating it. Okay so that will go in the bin. Cheers, Jed. Okay, so you can see now there we've got the little bit of slack. How close are you, mate? Very close. Okay, so you can see there that we've got the, the slack coming out in between the top wind, which is the first one we did, and the underneath wind. I just noticed my nails really dirty as well. It's a bit scungy anyway. Okay, so um, yeah, that's, that's the connection for how to connect it to the tuning peg. So I think we'll go back out to a wide now, please, mate. So now you know how to connect the string at the bridge and how to connect the string to the tuning peg. So the next stage is to tune it up. Now I've got my big fancy Peterson tuner here. Um, using a stroke tuner is a really good idea if you're kind of playing professionally or something because they're really super accurate. They're also quite expensive. Um, so if you're just learning you probably don't want one but any, any tuner would do. So we, we've got the, the note now in tune. So the next thing I wanted to show you is about stretching in. Now, once a string's on, it's got quite a bit of give in it 
before, and it will keep going flat for a little while unless you stretch it in. Now, um, a lot of really big name session musicians uh, choose not to stretch it in, but just to keep tuning up a lot if they're in the studio, because they do sound a little brighter um, before they're stretched in, but you have to, I mean, only a really expensive microphone's gonna notice. You probably won't even, your ears probably won't even notice. Um, so I choose to stretch mine in. Now, stretching them in is also really important if you're doing a gig, because what you wanna make sure is that you've got a good string and not a naff string, if the string breaks, I'd much rather do it when I'm tuning up rather than doing it on stage. So, especially if you've got a gig on, make sure that you stretch it in. So, hold the string here with your fingers, and I use my elbow and my arm here, and I give the string a bit of a pull and a good wobble. Yeah? And then, I'm doing this a little bit now just to kind of prove a point. It's also now tension, making, kind of pulling in all of the extra winds that I had on the end as well. Okay, and now when I tune it up, it's down to F sharp, so we lost a whole semitone. And now we're back in tune again. So if I stretch it in, it'll lose just a touch more if I, if I keep stretching it in. I normally st stretch in three times with a tune in between, and then I sit and bash the life out of my guitar with some wild strumming for a little while to make sure it's good. Um, Normally I would change all my strings at the same time. I know a lot of people say not to do that because the neck bends. As long as you don't leave the guitar for a couple of days in between, it's going to be fine. I've never had a problem doing it that way. So I pull all of the strings off, give it a little bit of a clean with a damp cloth, and I use glass cleaner. I don't know if that's the right thing to use, but I've been using it for years and it hasn't damaged any of my instruments yet. Um, so a bit of glass cleaner, give it a polish up, then I put all of the strings on. I usually start with the thickest one, but I don't think it really matters which one you start with. Make sure you stretch them in and you should be a happy camper. Hope that helps and uh, you get nice shiny DR strings on your guitar real soon. <laughs> See you soon guys, bye.